Let's talk Tanya for the third of Cheshven of Alipir. In yesterday's Tanya, the Alter Rebbe explained and justified a passage from the Tzavos Harivash, a book which collects the teachings of the Baal Shem Tev, which the opponents of Hasidim found to be problematic. Now, why were they so up in arms about this passage? So we have to understand that this was part, really, of a larger controversy that was raging at that time, something that we've talked about in the past, specifically when we learned Chapter 7 of Shariq Vamuna, the controversy that regarded what's called Simtsum Kipshutai, which means that when the Kabbalists describe God before creation as having contracted himself, is that literal or is it not literal? So the opponents of Hasidism, led by the Vilna Goin, they held Simsum Kipshute, they held that when the Kabbalists talk about God contracting himself, it's quite literal, which means that this world, there are many unsavory, undesirable elements here in this world. God does not exist within them. God remains outside of them, so to say. Yes, his uh, providence extends over them. He has the ability to control them, but ultimately, we don't say that God expresses himself through them. And the Alter Rebbe came out swinging, Again, we learned about this earlier on, and he says, Tzimtzum shote, we cannot take the contraction literally, and God is ultimately pl- present and works through anything and through everything. And after, and the Altarebbe says, if you look in the writings of the Rizal, plainly what I'm saying is over there. And the Altarebbe continues, and the Altarebbe says, in words which are very, uh, very telling, he says, he says, Bishagam, especially, that this idea which I'm expressing over here, doesn't really, it's not really the, of the domain of Kabbalah, which as we know, the Kabbalah is considered the hidden or the concealed part of the Torah. Rather, it is something which is revealed to us, to us and to our children. We all believe with a complete belief in that which the verse says, God says, I fill the heavens and the earth. And the verse has to be taken quite literally. And this is the simple faith that all Jewish people have which is handed down to us by our parents who always went, bitmimus, they went simply with God. They didn't have to understand everything. Not everything had to make sense. After all, godliness is something which is well beyond that which we can understand, infinitely beyond that. And maybe we don't understand how God fills everything and God is present everywhere, but that's part of an object of simple faith that all Jewish people have. And al Rebbe continues and he says, here you see a passage of... The Tzavos Arivash, from the, a work of, um, of Hasidus, which seems to be puzzling, it seems even to be disrespectful to God to say that God is right now present within this non-Jew who is disturbing the Jew who is praying. And nevertheless, if we look, we see this is plainly present in the writings of the Arizal, the Arizal whose authority who everyone accepts. The Alter Rebbe says the same thing is true with anything that you might see in any of the works of Hasidus, even if it sounds, doesn't sound right, it might seem puzzling, there's an explanation for everything. However, the Alter Rebbe says, I can't, I don't have the time to go and to write these, uh, these treatises and to explain every single one of the passages which might seem puzzling, but rather the Alter Rebbe says, to, and again, this letter is addressed to the opponents of Hasidim, and says, send for me someone, a prestigious person, a Torah scholar, and let that person come to me, and face to face, I'm willing to respond to any questions and any objections that that person might have. And with that, we've concluded this letter, but there's an obvious takeaway over here for every single one of us. Um, we all, in life, we encounter certain people or certain situations, and it seems that these people are intent on hindering, impeding our service of Hashem. It's not only that we have the ability to overcome these obstacles and overcome these hindrances. What Dr. Rebbe is telling us over here in this chapter is that this is an, this is an example of Golos HaShchina, the exile of the Shechina. It is the divine power right now that is being harnessed, and you might even want to say hijacked, in order ostensibly, to disturb my servants of, service of God. But really, what is it? It's all a trick. It's all a ploy. Ultimately, everything that happens is orchestrated by God, and its purpose is to bring me to a greater, to a higher place in my service of God. But by using this obstacle as a springboard, I can actually serve God with even greater determination, with greater energy. After all, everything is Hashem. Even when it comes to Klippa, it is also Hashem. And it has a purpose, and its purpose is to get me to serve Hashem with a greater intensity. Again, we've concluded now this chapter. Tomorrow we start chapter 26, another long chapter on the topic. The Alter Rebbe there explains a perplexing passage of the Zohar.